Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to take a closer look at the toroidal solenoid. In the previous videos, we had made the claim, or at least I had made the claim, that the magnetic field inside a toroidal solenoid is pretty well uniform anywhere within the, the uh, solenoid. However, if the radius of the solenoid is relatively small to the width of the solenoid itself, then that's not really a good claim. It is acceptable to say that if this is a very thin toroidal solenoid, then there's a large radius from the center to the edge of the solenoid. So in this case, what do we do? Well, let's find the exact magnetic field inside a toroidal solenoid that does not make that approximation. So what we did is we took a small section of it right here, we blew it up. You can see that we're going to find the magnetic field right here at a distance A away from the inner radius of the solenoid. Notice R1 is the inner radius and R2 is the outer radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a closed loop integral and here's a small section dl and of course there is a magnetic field b and we know from Ampere's law that the closed loop integral of b dot dl is equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed. Now what we have here is um, we have a small section of it and notice that this is going to be our closed loop integral around the whole loop even though it's a pi shape it's still a closed loop as we call it and notice that these two legs of the integral will not contribute to the magnetic field because they are parallel to the current anytime you have a path parallel to the current it doesn't cross the current like that there is no magnetic field effect only here where it crosses the current it's perpendicular to the current therefore we're going to have a magnetic field right there at that location. So all we have to do is integrate all the way around the toroidal solenoid at this particular path. So there's the equation we're going to use, the closed loop integral b dot dl equals mu sub naught times i enclosed. And so here for we're going to have b times dl, the path length integrated all the way around. Notice that we're going to use small r as distance from there to the b field, to the magnetic field, which is the inner radius of the solenoid, plus the distance out to there. And notice we'll write in such a way that we can pick A as any distance in between here to find the magnetic field anywhere inside the solenoid. So that's going to be uh, 2 pi times little r times the cosine of the angle between, between the direction of the path and the direction of the magnetic field. But you can see that they're both in the same direction, so therefore that the cosine of 0 degrees and the cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 1, so it's equal to mu sub naught times i enclosed, and the current enclosed is going to be the current inside the loops times the number of loops, the total number of loops would be n, so it would be uh, i times n, or n times i. I think we typically write it n times i, so let's write like that, that's a more uniform way of writing it, so times n times the current in each loop i. Okay, so now we have 2 pi r, but remember that r is going to be equal to r1 plus a, so let's replace that. So we have b times 2 pi times r1 plus a equals mu sub naught times n times i. Now the reason why I can write it like this is because the magnetic field will be the exact same strength at the exact same distance a away from the inner radius, like that. So now we can solve for the b field, the magnetic field, so we can say that the magnetic field is equal to mu sub naught times n times i divided by 2 pi times the quantity r1 plus a. So really it does change as a gets bigger, as we go further and further out, a bigger denominator will give us a smaller magnetic field. So it's not a constant, it does diminish as we go further out. Um, now another thing we can do is, let's say that if a becomes very very small compared to r1, what happens now? So if a is much, much smaller than R1, then this equation then becomes B is equal to mu sub naught N times I divided by 2 pi times R1. And then you can see that becomes again the exact equation we had before when we ignored the fact that there's a relative reasonable distance or a, a reasonable thickness to the toroidal solenoid. And so we get back to original equation. But if we want to make sure we get the exact magnetic field strength, as a function of radius, then we should use that equation right there. And that will give us the correct equation for the magnetic field inside the toroidal solenoid. That's it.